Let's look at the early lines, things that uh, we should get in on early. BMOC, Jeff Nadu from Barstool Sports set to join us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. And we got an Eagle game on Thursday. We got that line that came out six and a half, now down to four for Philadelphia. They are a four-point home favorite, open six and a half. I guess uh, some of the injuries have tweaked out a little bit. We'll get some thoughts on that. Great college football slate as well. Let's bring in BMOC Jeff Nadu, Barstool Sports, right now here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. He's back with a look at the early lines. What's up, Jeff? Hey, Mike. How are you? A little method man to bring in. How about that? Who gets that treatment? Not too many. I love it. <laughs> I'm a big meth fan. Uh, great actor as well. Uh, he was terrific as Cheese in the Wire, one of the worst characters in the show, but a very uh, good acting career. For I, I see. I, by the way, I don't know if you know this about me. Wire, huge. Top three show all time for me. Uh, well, look, Mike, not only is it the best show of all time, it's probably the greatest piece of entertainment ever made. When you put movies, TV all together, it should be a single requirement that every American watch the show. Wow. It is exquisite, perfect, and uh, I mean, it, the, the show is just so real and just, I think it's I think it's one of our big issues in this country and, and good for David Simon for putting it on the big screen. I I'm 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 the biggest wire fan in this country. So uh, all yes, right. you you get instant points with me, Mike. I didn't know that that was your number one of all time. I knew you were a big wire guy, but I'm a huge fan of wire. It's it's in my definitely in my top three. I loved it. I'm a big Baltimoresman too. I travel down there often. Love hanging out in the uh, in the harbor area and over there in Fells Point. So I'm always kind of down there, but. Let's get down to business, as they say, right? Uh, you just got a blog up, by the way, uh, over at BarstoolSports.com on college basketball. So make sure you guys go check that out. Preseason college basketball questions, BMOC answers them for you. Uh, so go check out his blog at BarstoolSports.com. I want to get your thoughts. Let's start with the NFL because we got Philly playing on Thursday night. Start at six and a half, already crept down to four What's the what's the read into that movement? I mean, a lot of times the line doesn't move that much because of uh, a position player leaving. That's usually a quarterback getting hurt. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously just to think, you know, the, the line moving down, I wouldn't put a ton of stock into that real early here. I mean, with these two teams, there's so much uncertainty with, with what you have. I mean, again, I'm not making excuses for these. I'm not one to do that. I'm very rigid with this team on a weekly basis, but – it is truly alarming, uh, Mike, how many injuries this team gets on a weekly basis. I can't say I remember a team that got this many injuries. And you know, I think it really is a testament to how bad not only their um, medical group down there is, but look, this city is pretty poor with medical groups. I mean, you look at the Sixers. Uh, they've had some brutal medical situations recently. I don't know if it's they're not stretching down there. I don't know if they're not putting time into conditioning and diet and things like that. But this is laughable. A lot of this stuff is, I don't know, preventable. But I, I got to wonder how many of these injuries are, are so, you know, just kind of tweaks and things like that or, or guys that are just not getting the right rehab. It's really laughable. But you look at this offensive line, I mean, not only do you look at this where – they're in third and fourth level players, but you know, what happens, Mike, if someone gets injured again, I mean, they really don't have any more depth. I mean, you're basically going into guys like Brent Toth and Luke Jariga. Luke Jariga is a a practice squad player. That's never played at this level. I mean, there's really no depth left. You put Richard Rogers in there to play offensive line at some point. It's, (laughs) it's incredible. So do I think the Eagles get fixed and, 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 you know, get better? Of course I do. I think there's plenty of talent coming in that, that will, will help. But, yeah, there's just too many uncertainties with this game. Defensively, I don't think they're that good. Uh, I think Jim Schwartz would be relieved. Um, and the Giants are kind of interesting. I mean, Daniel Jones is a pretty quarterback. I like their defense. I think their secondary is solid. Um, I'm not looking to lay the points with the Eagles right now. In any uh, uh, last night we saw Dallas. I know a lot of people watch a team on prime time and then base their opinion on that. It opened up Washington plus three. It's down to one at most places right now. So do you take advantage of the fact that people saw Dallas look awful uh, or do you pass on them? Yeah, I, I definitely think that's something to keep an eye on. But, Mike, as I told you last week, and I'll tell you until – 
um, something changes for two or three games. Defensively, this team is horrible. I mean, they're one of the worst defense I've seen at this level in a long time. They don't look like they care. Uh, no one looks like they have any interest in playing out there. And, you know, you look at even last night, you get Leighton Vander Esch back. It didn't seem like it made any difference. They were just as bad. They were just as inept. Uh, this is a bad team, Washington, that they're going to play. But, you know, teams like, you know, even they can move. I, look, uh, Mike, if, you, if the Alabama Crimson Tide played Dallas right now, they could score 21 points. I, I think that this group is that bad uh, defensively. I, I also didn't really like what I saw. It looked like Andy Dalton not only could score, not score the ball. It, they had trouble just moving the ball. Ezekiel Elliott looks like a shell of the player he was a year or two ago. He's fumbling left and right. The the, the players last night just looked lost. They couldn't catch the ball. I don't think that will happen again. Mike, though, you're, you're, you're making this tough here. First two games, very tough out of the gate. I would probably lean with, uh, with both dogs in both these games. I just don't have any interest in backing either team. It doesn't seem like anyone wants to win this division. Well, I don't know. Did you see the uh, reports that came out, the, the, the Dallas players ripping the coaching staff, saying they're unprepared, they don't know what they're doing, uh, they don't know how to adjust on the fly? It sounds like that thing is, is, is getting ready to burn to the ground already. Yeah, it does. I mean, Mike McCarthy made some odd decisions last night, you know, kicking field goals down 25. And, you know, it was a, I think it was like a 55-year field goal at that. Um, I, I got to tell you, as an Eagle fan and as a Philadelphia guy, I'm not exactly uh, <laughs> mad about it. I love seeing them burst at the seams. Just, I just hope that the Philadelphia Eagles, this is a spot this week that they should be able to seize the moment, obviously, even with a, a banged-up group. Um, but, I mean, the Eagles have some of their own issues, so it's kind of hard to dance on the grave of the Cowboys just yet. All right, Jeff Nadu, big man on campus from Barstool Sports. We're looking at some early lines. Now we got a Thursday and Friday couple of college games. Any plays you like before we get to the Saturdays? Yeah, you know, I actually like this game. Um, what would it be? Thursday night, uh, Arkansas State, Appalachian State. Uh, this is a very low-level Sunbelt game, but these are two good football teams, two teams that can move the ball. I know a lot of people last week probably bet on that crazy Arkansas State-Georgia State game, a game that was into the 50s for both teams. Mike, uh, Arkansas State made some moves after that game. They actually fired their defensive coordinator and defensive pass game coordinator after they gave up 600 yards to Georgia State. So, you know, this is a group that is in – a mode now where I think it's just kind of throw things out there and see what works defensively. They are shockingly bad. And what you got to love about Arkansas state from an over perspective is they throw the ball. Uh, I think seventh in the country in passing percentage. So they don't run. They throw a ton. They have two quarterbacks. They can wing it around good skill vision players and they get no stops on defense. Appalachian state should be able to run all over uh, Arkansas state. Arkansas state is a, bottom 10 defense in the country. Uh, 66 and a half seems a little low in this game. I figure App State could put 40 plus on the board. I think Arkansas State could probably push 35 or 40. This isn't a vintage Appalachian State defense either. So um, I'm going to look for uh, over 66 and a half here. Maybe we'll give it a point down or two uh, by Thursday. All right. Uh, and by the way, don't forget, Jeff joins me Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock. We'll go through the college games. But, again, we're looking at some early lines to see if something. Now, the Big Ten is back, and I'm sure that will add a lot of plays for people out there. And uh, is any of the Big Ten stuff, any of the Saturday stuff jumping out early at you? Yeah, there's actually two Big Ten games. I want to make this clear, though. I wouldn't just jump right into the Big Ten. You obviously want to do some homework. Don't just – I know guys just want to get, get action in, but you make sure you're doing at least a little homework. Know who's having trouble with COVID or maybe hasn't gotten the practice in. Friday night, Illinois is an interesting group. Um, getting a big number against Wisconsin. A lot of people like Wisconsin generally early in the year, but Illinois is a team I'm going to have my eye on this year. They went bowling last year. Lovey did a great job with this group. They bring back most of the talent they had. Uh, Brandon Peters is a capable quarterback. They've got some good receivers, and they have a good run game. Mike, Mike Epstein is a player that I think averaged around six yards a carry last year defensively. Uh, they bring back some solid players in the back, uh, back group with the secondary and linebackers. This just is a lot of points for a Wisconsin team that generally has struggles moving the football. Defensively, they're always good, but I'm going to kind of have some interest in maybe grabbing Illinois. I want to see where this line goes. And on Saturday, I already took Minnesota uh, plus three against Michigan. Uh, this was a spot that I just 
What was the number I there? I think they should be three-point dogs. You know? uh, three-point dogs on Minnesota is at home okay. against Michigan. Michigan's got some uh, new players working in. I talked to some people that are big Michigan backers, big fans. They're a little worried about going on the road here with a new quarterback. And Minnesota brings back a lot of good players from last year. I am a bit worried from what I understand. They do have a little bit of a COVID issue right now, but I'm just hoping we get the big time players like Bateman and the quarterback. I think we'll be fine. I think this one comes down to the wire. I'll gladly take a field goal in a home game for Minnesota. Real quick. I know you're the BYU whisperer. You got a 10, 15 Saturday yeah. nighter. That's a 30 and a half number. There. That's yeah. a big one. Yeah, you know, you can actually find some better numbers out there. Um, Brigham Young, you know, I love this team. We got some late football on Saturday, which is great. It usually has ended earlier. Yeah, Texas State sucks, Mike. Uh, This is a really bad team. What I don't like about Texas State, um, from a a perspective of defense, they are not good defensively. Their offense goes really fast. They run this really quick offense. The problem they have is they don't have the personnel to run that sort of offense. What it leads to is short possessions. I love BYU covering a big number because they have a great defense and they put points up in a hurry. Uh, Look for the one to probably be 48-7, 48-10, something like that. BYU has played better competition and did better against those groups. Texas State could be the worst team they played this year. This is one I'm squarely eyeing up. If I can get a 28 here or anything under 31, I'm likely going to play Brigham Young at home. That's uh, You're right. It opened at 30 and a half. It's 28 and a half at some places. I don't know what it is on the Barstool app, but uh, you got to be in Pennsylvania. Remember, uh, people in PA can use the Barstool app. That's where you can read Jeff's stuff, uh, barstoolsports.com. Uh, Jeff Nadeau is with us. He'll be back on Saturday morning, 9 o'clock. We'll go through some other games that he likes as we get closer to the week here. But before we let you roll, you got any uh, randos? You got any soccer action? You got any uh, in on the World Series at all? Yeah, you know, I actually have a future on the Tampa Bay Rays at 17.5 to 1 to uh, win the title. So I'm going to be kind of rooting that in. I've had some good ones. The heat came up short. Hopefully the Rays can kind of do something for me here. As far as soccer, we'll be back with Serie A. I'm off a 3-0 and week in Italy this week, Mike. Uh, Sassuolo. Mike, did you see that game? Sassuolo down 3-1. They come back and win 4-3. I am the Sassuolo whisperer right now. Jeff, all I know, right now, Jeff, Jeff, I will say this. Did I see the game? Yeah. No, but I woke up and saw bet one. <laughs> That's what I saw. Well, I was I, asleep I will, at that time when that will, game was on. Well, I woke up at 6.30, Mike, because I had to be at the Barstool Gambling House that day, and I got an early start. So I sat and watched it, and it was quite the game. Sassuolo, though, this week is a home favorite. They're laying 175-180. This week, in the great, the words of one of your uh, rivals, Mike, Howard Eskin, he used to say, if you're scared, get a dog. <laughs> if you're scared to lay the number, get a dog. Sassuolo will win this week. I think both teams are scoring over two and a half. It's a good bet, though, as well. Sassuolo is just terrific. I love them. Torino sucks with a capital S. Sassuolo wins. Uh, you could probably parlay it with the over two and a half as well. I love Sassuolo. And that's a Serie A? That is Serie A. Forza Sassuolo. Gotcha. Jeff Nadeau, big man on campus, BMOC. Get him on Barstool Sports. Dot com. Check out his new blog. Check out his videos. And he'll be back on Sunday morning. We'll have a little coffee together and talk about the college football slate. Jeff, by the way, did you see Chris Rock's back in a commercial? His best role was Pookie in um, New Jack City, right? Uh, you know what? Actually, a pretty underrated role as well in Head of State. If you've never seen that movie, it is election season, folks. We all know that. <laughs> Do you remember that movie when he played, uh, he was the first black president? Do you remember that movie? I do oh, remember man. that movie. It, it's actually funny as hell. It I, was I good. Bernie Mac was in that movie, wasn't he? Wasn't Bernie Mac in that? Yes. Yeah. He was in, He was his brother in the movie. Yes. Rest in peace at a great Bernie Mac. Yes. Head of State. It, it'll get you in the election season. All right. Well, we talk movies. We talk gambling. That's what we do here with the big man on campus. Jeff, take care, buddy. You too, man. All right. We'll uh, get him back on Saturday morning, 9 o'clock, as we do for the best of the sports batch. We go live Saturday mornings at 9 for BMOC.